Welcome into Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Joining you from glorious Alhambra, Jason. Going back to, uh, going old, back reliable. to the old reliable. That's it. I'm sticking with it. This is it. Alhambra. You didn't, think, you didn't think of anything good. Adjacent. To... No, I thought it was good the first time. I said, you brought it up. I said, don't veer off a good thing. And I think we had a good thing there. Some so comments on YouTube open. that were like, I missed it. They did? Yeah. So for you people that are listening on the podcast, we do reason. a YouTube version where you can actually see Max and I's beautiful faces and our great outfits. Uh, and um, see the the athletes that we interview or the LAFC personnel that we interview. And uh, before we get into Max and Vince, that's the MVP, the M and the V of the P of this podcast. And the M and the V of the P. <laughs> Fair. We are very thrilled. We're very thrilled to let you know. And we're very thrilled that we just were able to do this. Giorgio Chiellini is our guest. No words. No words. That's Remember why, Vince if, is... If uh, I'm smiling differently, it's because we do the interviews usually beforehand. Those, and, of course, we did Chiellini beforehand. So now I'm just I'm coasting through this part. He's a die-cast Italian. He loves it. And, uh, and a Juventus fan. Everyone's, he's so delightful. It's all honest. It's all real. That's who he is. He's mm-hmm. just this delightful guy who happens to be one of the greatest defenders in modern football. Mm-hmm. And we will talk about his game in Nashville. We'll talk about the transition. And we're, we did our due diligence to make sure we got new information because we know he's done the, the, the car mass wash, car as wash, say. as they say, of the Will you remind people what the – a lot of people probably coin, don't know what a car wash is. Coined by Bob Lee at ESPN. And when they uh, would bring athletes or dignitaries to the ESPN campus, they would put them on every show. For instance, I remember Brock Lesnar was there, and I had the last show for him, and he said to me, I'm never coming back. (laughs) I mean, a guy that size says that. You go, you don't have to, man. But it's like uh, the car wash can be pretty uh, demanding and intense, especially one day in Bristol, Connecticut. So I don't know if they do as many car washes as they used to, but they used to do a ton. Mm -hmm. So to a lesser degree, although it was different media outlets. You got to do it in L.A., luckily for him. Uh, Pop around. But we saw it all. Uh, Great answers uh, with, I I know he's there with uh, Sebi and and Hercules. That was a great interview. That, for me, the Sebi and Herc was the one that I was like, Max, you and I got to bring it. Because they they asked him some great questions. And I was like, I don't want to redo what Herc did because it was a great interview. That should stand alone. We need need to put ours up against them so that you can have those two side by side. I remember... uh, uh Sebi and Herc asked him, I go, you know, what do you think of Christian Pulisic going to Juventus? Uh, there's some rumors. And then Georgia goes, it's the first time I heard of it. And then I knew he's not going to Juventus. Your inclination there was right, because you know that Giorgio is clear to all know. that stuff. Yes. Georgia would know, as, as he spent almost two decades with Juventus. So stick around for that. It's a wonderful interview. And if you haven't fallen in love with Giorgio Chiellini, uh, you certainly will at this point. And if you don't, then I know you I will did. at some point. I, I, it's mesmerizing. Uh, the coffee, by the way, very popular now here at the Performance Center. You'll see. Massive win for LAFC over the weekend going to Nashville. This was an exciting game, not only because of the new participants. First ever match against Nashville, which is a club that's been in the league for three years, but obviously COVID had altered that. And it came at a good time because you get to go to their glorious new venue, 30,000-seat Jodas Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, which has got a nice surface, and it's Jodis or Geodis? Geodis. I'm sorry to the sponsors. Geodis Park. Well, I don't. I'm. I actually. I think I'm, it is. Geodis. I, I'm actually asking you. I don't know. I think is it, it Geodis? Okay. I said Jodis. That sounds like Jodis. Jodis. Jodisy. Great band. Yeah. Geodis Park, and it felt like everyone was watching this. Not everyone was, but a lot of people were. Certainly, the soccer community was, and LAFC get their fifth away game and their first against a Western Conference opponent, get back into first in the overall standings. Kind of a big deal. I was doing the watch along, so I don't know if you said this on the broadcast, although when we do the watch along, we do it as an accompaniment to your broadcast. Uh, You said that it's the first time LAFC has gotten to travel there to Nashville to play them. Did you know that our old friend Walker Zimmerman has now played more for Nashville than he has for LAFC? Isn't that weird? I did not say that. I would have loved to have said that. Isn't that that weird, though? It's one of those little stats that you're like, yeah, he's played like 65 times for them and like 58 times for LAFC. Isn't that weird? Yeah, first time getting to play against Walker. That, That was cool. But yeah, to your point, Nashville is a good team. They're a resolute team. They play in a specific way where they're hard to break down. So I was very interested to see this LAFC team go and play against that team because you always wonder with a team that's top of the table, how will they break down a team that is really going to sit back and they're not going to get out of position? I mean, the result speaks for itself, but I think there was a few moments there. They could have been sharper, and Steve said that after the match. I think they created some advantages and should have been sharper in their passing, but they pass. Flying colors being That's able to break down. A, it That's is a tough, a tough place, place and a tough team, especially when they know the occasion. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were fully fit. They had all their star players. Granted, they were coming off a midweek game, which is going to 
handcuff them a, a little bit. a good bit. win. Uh, and look, there's so many subplots to this. And you mentioned Walker Zimmerman. The fact that Walker Zimmerman, at, at a couple moments there, was marking Gareth Bale, <laughs> which will be a matchup that this, in country, this entire country and Wales and many other parts of ports of call in the world will stop to watch on November 21st when these two countries, Wales and the United States, meet in the World Cup. So there was just an overload, a sensory overload mm -hmm. about this game. They're not going to always be like this, but I'll, I'll say this, Vince. I look at the schedule, and you see what's ahead of LAFC, and now they have this entire group together, and who knows if they add to it some more. Mm. But, I mean, the, the, new, the newness of it will wear off, but they, you'll still have Gareth Bale and Giorgio Chiellini. Every game is going to be an event. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, so Giorgio gets his start, 60 minutes, so we kind of tick that off the box. Uh, Gareth gets in. Obviously, he does the, uh, the back heel first thing. And I want to speak up for my, uh, my partner in crime here. Hey, MLS, when Gareth Bale gets subbed into the game and then does something amazing, you put out two clips. You put out him coming into the game and then him doing something amazing. Maybe take my man's home call there uh, so we get a little more of the excitement because no offense to the Nashville broadcast. I actually, for me. when I put it in there, I actually put over the Nashville broadcast and Tony Husband. I said a stat that he called Gareth Bale's first game, so that's what I said. So I actually put them over in the process. Yeah, um, so but I'm just saying very nice. the excitement level because then I I heard your call and it was a little different. Yeah, a little bit, it ramped it up a little bit more. Yeah, it's that's, that's the way it should be. And if it was in reverse, then you should take the Nashville call. But correct. Thank you, Vince. Just a technical check thing. is in the mail. Yes. We'll get to our three points that stood out. I did want to just talk about the, the overall complexion of the game. Mm -hmm. And after I called the game, I rushed through social media because you wanted to see what the impact was. My entire timeline was this game. Yeah. Gareth Bale, Gareth so Bale. back heel flick. Uh, Bale. Team security, Paul, all over. My son, he just came out. He was everywhere. The back heel. But every carrier had it. It was, you know, men in blazers, which obviously have a big... Um, and they would normally care, uh, talk about the big events, but they, they were rep repeatedly posting CBS, ESPN FC, some of the bigger uh, non-soccer carriers were doing it. I mean, I don't know the, the official numbers, but we're talking about maybe, you know, when you look at the impact these two guys have had to the social media footprint of LAFC, MLS, all of that, uh, then I, maybe in, in the billions, I, I don't know. It's just huge because I've never seen anything like that. And that day in particular, and it will continue, was pretty eye-opening. This is, was one of those another milestone moments in MLS, right? Where you, you see it. We were a little bit surprised, but not surprised. It was bigger than we thought it was going to be. And I think, but we did. then from, from there, you hope that this just kind of is commonplace, right? We, we start, we, you and I always talk about this, and it's one of the reasons why MLS is both exciting, but it has work to do is, there's, there's MLS Cup, there's the playoffs, there's the knockout system that everyone goes, those, that couple weeks is nuts. You know, there's upsets, there's everything, there's the drama. How can we make the regular season more like that? And we said there's a couple ways you can do it. One is by support, celebrating the Supporter Shield as, if not equal leveling, just, just below I, I MLS I feel like we're getting a little closer we to are, that. I think as, as a public, we're learning it more and understanding what it means more. It means that your team was the best team and your fans had the most fun for six months. I'd take that. And a lot comes with it, right? Yeah. You get the Supporter Shield. You get the Conquer right. Camp Champions League spot. You get to be at home in the postseason. Mm -hmm. You finish first. You get a bye. Mm -hmm. So the rewards are right. significant. And that's something that LAFC should pursue and will pursue as they go forward. And just to give you an idea, the win for LAFC puts them one point ahead of Austin. Uh, I think it's 42 and 41 points. Correct. And LAFC has a game in hand. Now, you got to be leery because the Eastern Conference teams are in this too. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia Union were at 39. New York City FC is 38. Those four are all in the mix. Then it's a big drop-off afterwards. Someone could certainly get back in it. They're going to have to surge. Really I, just, surge. I mean, if LAFC is winning like this away, and it's a pretty agreeable schedule, and you would imagine they're only getting healthier, where do they drop the points? They're supposed to. But this is a team we've never seen that's this deep and talented mm -hmm. that uh, I think you probably count on, at the most, two hands the amount of points they drop from here on in to the end of the season. I know it's a lot of games. Yeah, still a lot of games to go. A lot of things can happen. You know, I'm, especially in this part of the season, the hot months, it gets a little bit crazy. But you're, you're right. There's four teams that have really separated themselves. The rest now are kind of saying, how can we solidify our playoff spot and maybe get a home game? 
uh, maybe the supporter shield. But that's the way the players talk about it too. Let's just be totally transparent. Like every, every I know every team starts and they say we want to win as much as we can. We want MLS Cup. We want to be top of our, uh, you know, our conference. But realistically, the teams then kind of see how the first couple games play out. Some teams say, okay, let's keep going. And then at this moment in the season, there will be teams that will be looking and saying, guys, we're we're basically out of the supporter shield race. Let's solidify where we are because. You, to your point, it, it might not matter what you do because LAFC is probably not going to drop as many points. Austin, I mean, Austin has one of the best road records, and they're going to have so many home games, as our good friend Elia Sanchez had reminded us. Uh, yeah, see, these guys, they're looking at the schedule. They're seeing how they can maybe get a little bit of an advantage even outside of the field. So we'll learn about Giorgio, too. He's got the, the schedule down photographically. Study, yeah, really studying it. It's, you know, it's incredible. You'll see in the, in the Giorgio interview, we obviously ask him about the derby and the rivalry. And the way he talks about the games he was not here for. We had a couple of mistakes. We did this. We were unlucky here. It was, it was very cool to have him say we. And he knew. He knew how the games went. But, but back to your original point about the support shield. Yeah, at this moment, it's going to be tough for a lot of teams. And maybe it's just those four. But you never know. You never know. Let's get to our three takeaways. And the number one, obviously, is the debuts. You mentioned Giorgio Chiellini getting 60 minutes. Gareth Bale getting 18 plus stoppage time. It's when we say about the debuts, we have to understand that getting the result is paramount over anyone playing. Mm -hmm. So when you are at the hour mark, and I think it made sense for Giorgio Chiellini, it was his first game. He mentioned how hot it was. He was, uh, he was, it looked like he just had a shower in his jersey when he walked off. Mm -hmm. And even then, a central defender like that is a risk to take out. Because you have, and not only that, because Eddie Segura came in and he moved out wide, and then Ibiaga would come in. Yeah. So they did a lot of movement. That's if you're protecting a lead, that's can be dangerous because the partnerships have to be down pat. You've spent an hour to get them down pat for a new player, and now you're shifting again. Yeah, a little tease to what is another point that we're going to have coming up. But you take out a central defender and you start moving things. Now you got to start saying, does everyone know where they're supposed to be on set pieces? Yeah. Because central defenders are so important that, and Giorgio Chiellini paramount to that but you're right it's all about the result and for me watching Giorgio Chiellini what I took away from it was two things his ability to recognize the next pass I mean the passing out of our defensive line in this game was was another level it really was and and maybe that's Giorgio would say it's not just him he's just part of the team but I think he sees game, the game a little bit different also having a left-footed center back you see why it can be port important. Oh. He, the ball just co it's already on his left foot. He doesn't have to shift. Uh, the way it's played to him across from Jesus David Murillo. And Jesus David Murillo is my second point. His game was incredible. It was really, it was maybe his best game. Maybe his best per game. He was perfect. I don't think. And he even had that little move around Dax McCarty. I don't think if you were judging him, you could say, well, he could have done that better. It was pretty spot on. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I'm a big fan of Jesus David Murillo. I think he's underrated. I think because of the physicality and the way that he plays the game, some people find him to be clumsy or mistake-ridden. I, I don't really see that because, honestly, he'll make some mistake, but his recovery speed or his ability to fight through that and still make the play, make the block, I think supersedes that for me. But this game, for those people that are saying, well, I don't like him because he's clumsy, he was so calm. I don't, I don't get the clumsy. I mean, maybe Dude, last were, year we could have had a we could have had a, a real yeah. discussion. But did you feel Can't the level? That. Did you feel the level of calm? Like there, yeah. it, it was a different level, I think, in a mentality. He was still doing all the things that he does great, but it just felt like he was more positionally aware. And it took a second for them to sort it out. But against a team with Hani Mukhtar and CJ Tsapong and the way they sorted that out, I mean, did you feel that Nashville had it over on them it, it, from? From actual, from open play. I don't, no. I didn't think at all. There was a, sh when Georgia Killini, to be expected, came in and CJ Sapong went after him. And Jesus Murillo wiped away some of the uh, the problems there early on. You could see them high-fiving repeatedly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a reflection of Murillo looking out for Giorgio and vice versa. And it takes a while for that, to get back to my previous point, to, to really lock it down. But they looked out for each other. It was nice to see that. And that allowed, certainly, Giorgio to grow into the game. And he talked about that, too where he could come out. And, I mean, I'm seeing a guy get into the opponent's half with his left foot and spraying the ball here, distributing it, mm -hmm. uh, involved in that first goal. That's, I mean, those, that's the kind of defender you're getting in here, and it's, a, it's the modern defender in many ways. That's going to obviously make LAFC much more dangerous. If they, if they keep that high line defensively and they make sure that they keep the, the opponents at bay, but that will rub off on others as well, and that's going to, 
that's going to make this a, a goal-scoring machine, you would imagine. Yeah, and don't forget, when we had Will Kuntz, before Giorgio even showed up, he said, go back and watch Giorgio. If you really want to understand his game, he is definitely a modern defender, and it's, it's apparent in the way that he plays the ball, and he plays the ball out of defense. So we told you. We know that uh, Steve Trinillo wanted to get Gareth Bale. Everyone wanted to get him in. This is, this is a four-month stretch where he has to get ready for the World Cup. He needs minutes. He needs games. He needs to start. Doesn't mean he's going to get in there. Uh, I would imagine being up 2-1 uh, facilitated that. I, I would have to have a conversation with Steve and see what would have changed maybe where Bale doesn't come in. But he came in and he talked about it afterwards. He goes, I came in here to help protect this lead mm -hmm. and preserve the result. And it was a very... Uh, I mean, it was a very smart 18 minutes from Gareth Bale. He had the pizzazz with that little flick, but everything else was with the idea of making sure they walked out of there with the three points, which, again, as we get back, was the number one priority. It was three points. It was him getting his legs underneath him. Like you said, that, that flick was fun and all, but let's be real here. He was trying to get his legs underneath him, trying to get kind of the speed of play. He commented on it as well. The humidity and heat was a little bit different, but uh, you know what I loved is a little cheekiness. He goes, but I'll, I'll figure that out. He's not, he's not worried about it. And, yes, there was times when uh, Carlos was really the one leading the line, and Gareth is back there kind of facilitating to Carlos. I would say the biggest thing to take away from it was how it kind of – and our colleague, Jessica Black, said this on LAC 360. Didn't Carlos look a little bit energized yeah. when, Car when, when uh, Gareth came into the game? And I think uh, it was evident. And if that's, if that's a knock-on effect – We'll take it, but let, let's let's just be realistic and not try to overblow it. He was definitely trying to get his legs underneath him, and we're excited to see what the next step is, and I think he is as well. And as a sidebar to our first topic, uh, the mentality. And after conceding... They're all bought in. They're all bought in. This is a, a group, after conceding the goal, we... We, I talked about it on the broadcast. LAC are a great second-half team, but I didn't expect this, where they just overwhelmed Nashville in the first minute. Mm -hmm. Nashville looked like they weren't ready. LAFC were. Jose Cifuentes scores, and all is well again. And this is what we've grown to expect. Now, LAFC also got the lead, and we right. showed you how clinical they are when they take the lead. But one, that hasn't been the case all year. What has been the case is that they – bring it in the second half well how many times do you see teams on the road they do take a lead maybe it surprises that road team a little bit and then there's some adversity and i would say a var moment leading to a penalty right before the half is almost the the worst type of adversity you can get because a lot of times the home team goes guys little stumble we got this now they're away from home they're not going to be up for it like we're up for it in front of our crowd in front of 30,000 at geodis park which it, it was packed in there um but lafc comes out and in the first 45 seconds seizes the opportunity that, you know, off camera, Max and I go, man, we've been talking about this a lot, the second half. Uh, people are probably getting kind of sick of it. But if it keeps happening, and it keeps happening in, in these ways where it's different and the mentality is different every time, we've got to, it's got to be one of the number one things that, that teams got to look to with LAFC and say, you can't let up for a minute. Best second half attack. I think it's 27 goals, best second half defense. They've only allowed four. Let's move Four to Four goals in Four the goals. second half. That's, I mean, that, that, that's a ton of goals. Yeah. So, uh, that is a ton of goals. But that defensive record that is very defense. comforting. Yeah. It's like a nice warm blanket. Number two, we talked about the collective, how this is the sum of the parts, and different guys stepping up. And we talk about Bale, Chiellini, Vela. Well, it's Chicho Arango who scores. And then Jose Cifuentes, Ryan Hollingshead. I think Ryan Hollingshead Jesus probably Pudillo. had one of his best games. Didn't have a goal to show for it, but he was who incredible. Who didn't play well? Right. I mean, everyone, everyone played. <laughs> That's actually tough, probably the toughest question. Who we talked about Kellen well? Acosta. How Kellen well Acosta did. had a great game, yeah. It's uh, guys coming on and obviously making an impact off the bench. But that's a real thing. I know it sounds cliche, but we're a team. It's not always the case. This feels like a team, and they pick up each other. And we saw with LAFC sometimes where they, you know, remember the old LAFC where things were going well. They'd look at Carlos go, hey, can you, bail right. us? Can you get us going here? That's not the case, even though Carlos is a big part of it. And that'll bring me to the second part of this topic is it is still Carlos Vela. He is the fulcrum. Things are going to go around him regardless of what the lineup looks like. How do they fit? And that's still an open-ended question. But the first time in, it looked pretty good. But yeah, and that goes both ways, right? It is Carlos Vela's team, but he's seeing what his teammates are contributing, and he's feeling a little less pressure, and it's allowing his game to be more free. I think he's more open. Uh, I think he's more willing to facilitate. I, I feel like in past years when we would say we need you, Carlos, and maybe he didn't show up. It's because he's saying, well, if you need me, i got to be closer to goal. So you guys got to find a way to get the ball 
to me. I can't dribble five guys every time. I can't go 50 yards every time. Now he's saying, okay, there's Chicho Arango. There's Mahala. There's Ryan Hollingshead that's getting down the left side. He's, he's really feeling uh, the positional awareness of when I drop deep, he goes forward. I think Carlos just feels so comfortable in his skin right now. And that, that can be, uh, talk again about knock-on effects, that can be one of the biggest things going forward. And I think Giorgio kind of is, tells us that in his interview where he says, I'm just one of the guys. You know what I mean? And if I can contribute, and so I think for Carlos, if he sees a team, how many teams, how many MLS teams can you count on one hand that feel 15, 16 deep? Maybe two, three? Yeah. I would put the union in there because of the good right. academy players, right. which you could probably count. And the fact that you can, I, I just. And then I think Seattle, the way uh, Steve, when they're healthy. Yeah, especially they're not. Some, going back to those summer months. These summer months are going to get tough. You're going to have to rely on a lot of guys. Guys are going to feel exhausted. The load is, is going to be too much where you're going to have to maybe even rest some guys, even in just one competition because of the heat and the travel. And if LFC can rely on guys and Steve can put in a 90-minute game plan where maybe you say, hey, Chicho doesn't have to start because I'll bring him in in the 75th minute. Wow. Wow. How about that? So we still have to see how Carlos Vela and Gareth Bale, and we'll get a better look in the, the game on Saturday against Sporting Kansas City, which you can see on KCOP 13. Uh, our broadcast start at 5 o'clock local time. Uh, check out Mark Rogodino, Jordan Harvey, our plus one. I'll preview that in a little bit, a minor preview, because we're obviously going to talk a little bit more about that. But that'll be a better opportunity to see how Carlos and Gareth Bale. And that's like the million-dollar question, right? Yes. Because it that has to work for all of this to work for LAFC to hit their targets. Well, everyone is watching from the outside, but you can guarantee that John Thorrington, Will Coons, Steve Trondel are watching, and they, they have a feeling that it's going to work out, but they need to understand how that works because, as John always says, I, got, I collect the data points, and then we make decisions based off that. So there's an open TP slot. It's going to dictate where they go with it. Well, in many ways, we say, how does Carlos and Gareth uh, correlate? And this is a team, and, every, and everyone helps facilitate that. But really, that third member of the front three, I think will determine a long will we'll really determine how well that fits in i'm a big proponent of how you build your team I know, I know there's a lot of different ways to build a team some would say most talented players on the field I, I think more in roles so you could have a lot of talented players you could have all neymars but who's going to pass them the ball who's going to defend uh who's you know there's there's certain roles that you have to fit into and you think of carlos and gareth and they're kind of similar so you need a foil to them um, and as you say, that third person. But maybe it's, maybe it's not the person on the front line. Maybe it's the ability to play and get Ryan Hollingshead in behind, which we saw in that first goal. So Max and I are, are, are and giving they, you things that are kind of told to us, but I, they look at it even a, in a bigger, wider scope, I think. It could be a formational thing. Right. And we could see that on several times where you have what you saw. Uh, it, was it the Columbus game? Or was it the Vancouver? The Vancouver Vancouver's game. Vancouver's when you went three we center went three, back, but Columbus is where you went in a tactical different direction. Yeah, there you go. So there's some options. They're going to use it. It's going to pop up. And remember, they're deep in a lot of positions where it would make sense mm -hmm. if they may not have the right third person at the top to maybe shift differently there. So uh, it's, a, it's a lot of exciting developments in and around this team. We'll see how it how it goes. Okay, the third topic, uh, set piece defending. I, it's a little... Yeah, I I, 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 I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Um... The goal uh, off the penalty, which we could argue about, could CJ Sapong get to that ball? I don't think so. But when I saw it but happening, it, I said they're going to VAR is going to look at this. If and the ball is the in penalty. play and you foul a player in the box, yeah. it does not matter. Just yeah. for people that are wondering about that. So I mean, it's frustrating, and it wasn't seen on the field. That was uh, the VAR uh, coming in and saying they got to take a look at this. Drew Fisher, the referee, agreed. Penalty was awarded. That came off a corner kick. There was a couple other corner kicks where your heart was kind of in your throat. It felt a bit, you know, this was something that they've done a really good job of improving this year. But there were some moments in the last couple games where you're like, I feel like a little where it, it's getting a little unglued mm -hmm. where we saw maybe how it was a couple years ago where it was a right. real problem. Well, Nashville is, we should say, Nashville is very good at setting. That is, yeah. They have big and bodies. We said that in advance. And it felt like, and they were doing a good job of setting a lot of picks. It felt like it was the man-marking part that kind of lacked because they are good at, at setting picks and, and getting guys free. Uh, yeah, it's weird. In, in previous years, I felt like LAFC was bad more on the second phase. Um, and that's what where balls were. They were doing, doing the initial clearance, but they just didn't have the either willingness or that just kind of extra effort to really clear it. Now I feel like some teams are finding some ways to find some space in that first phase. And I think you can that's a, maybe a little bit easier to sort out because positionally you can kind of move guys. I think the effort's still there. Second phase is really more about effort. But now in this first phase, I think there's a couple of things that they really got to look at. Um, and then the best way to, 
to take care of that? Just limit set pieces. And which they did. They yeah, did. I they mean, did. I mean, remember we had the Vancouver game where they had 12, and they didn't do a really good job. LAFC defended those set pieces as well, those corner kicks. But here, I think it was like four or five. Which it was is only a, four. A, it felt like more, four, but maybe yeah, it was a couple fouls. That's a good total. If yeah. you can give four corner kicks, you're going to be happy about that. You're not going to concede a lot of goals, even though they did one here. A very nice ball by Nashville, but LAFC gets I'll stand up, points. though, for you, Latif. That one was not a foul when you had to track back, and it was in the middle. You got in Drew Fisher's face. Bad call. I think it was another one where Kellen got docked for one. That was clearly a clean tackle. Come on. Let's see if we got you. Everyone knows I'm well on record as not being a Drew Fisher fan. <laughs> He's going to the World Cup. Stay there. <laughs> He's a VAR official at the World Cup. So maybe that's his, uh, uh, I don't mind him. Maybe that's I, his We speed. could get into the officials. There's, there's a couple, by the way, that I'm, I've been enjoying their work a little okay. bit more. Maybe next There's episode. a couple that are in there that I got my eye on. I'm like, all right, this is good. It's getting. It's, if you guys it's want improving. us to do a referee episode, we'll, we'll do that on the side. I'd rather stay away from that. But again, we appreciate it. It's a tough job, and uh, it's a work in progress. So LAFC Saturday, again, KCOP 13, 5 o'clock local time. We'll have all the action. It is going to be at Sporting Kansas City. If you look at the standings, you'll see LAFC in first in the West. You'll see Sporting at the bottom. Yep, it's uh, still a tough place to play. It's a tough place to play. This is really their season. Think about from the Sporting Kansas City perspective. They come here, and they beat LAFC with Killini and Bale. Peter Vermees is a great coach. We'll get in that locker room and say, guys, we're still – in this thing mm -hmm. this is a, a game changer for them and you still have to remember it's sporting uh they've had some injuries alan Polito, the big one that has been out the entire season they've had guys underperforming i know we've talked a lot about daniel shallowy in the hot and cold years that he has well he's having a cold one it's his alternate year so it's the off year uh lafc will be the favorites you have to feel they're going to be improved and bale and chiellini with some wind in their sails from playing the games it's all shaping up LFC don't have to play in the midweek. It's it's a short week, but not a short, short week. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I worry about is you're getting that very best shot from Sporting, which to me makes them a very dangerous team. And they've had success against LFC in the past. Right. It's a dual-edged sword, right? No so Espinosa. Roger Espinosa, he's suspended. He's suspended. Although maybe that would we would have preferred him because he has a red card in him, clearly. Uh, but remember, they do have Peter Vermees that is going to have this team competing. And it's it's one of those games where you say, this team is only looking for a springboard to feel like they're back in it. So we have to put them down early because maybe they'll capitulate and they'll give up. However, the more you let them grow into that game, the more they're going to feel a part of it and more they're going to feel like, this is the last bit of our season. we got to save this. So they got to. I think that's the mentality you have to have going into it. Know that they're, that's what we kind of they're, the, corner, they're the cornered animal. That's what they've experienced with Vancouver, so to speak. Although right. Vancouver wasn't as far down, but you saw what a lift it was. No, they've but been it, playing pretty yeah, well and they're it. at home. Anytime a team's at home, again, they're, they're the animal that if you give them the confidence, you let them play into the game and grow into the game, you're gonna, it's going to make it that much more difficult for you. Plus, there's going to be humidity. It's going to be hot. It's just a lot going on. My memory of Sporting Kansas City, I went to this game in year one. It was the final game of the season. And if LAFC got a result, I think they would have finished second and got and a bye. Were, and they were up a man. And they were up. And they lost the game. And then lost to Real Salt Lake. Dropped down to dropped third. Down. Sporting uh, Still upset about that. Top of the table. Yeah. Still upset about that. But it's going to be a big game. Because guess what? The way LAFC is looking, you don't need me to tell you this. Every game is going to be a big game because there is a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for LAFC with the Supporter Shield, the bye, and the CONCACAF Champions League, and then we'll worry about the playoffs. But this is a fun part. Even if, Two Supporter Shields are better than one. Am I wrong about that? I take it. <laughs> I'll take no, I, said, I it, love the, the perception and what it means. And LAFC has allowed that change of perception. Yeah. No, you're right. They're, they're looking at this. Every game matters because the trophy is on the line. Enough of our yammering. Yeah, uh, we'll get you to the good stuff. Giorgio Chiellini, we still can't believe it, actually was sitting right next to us, and we will talk and we'll bring you that interview about a great many things and his adjustment to LAFC and how he's moving forward with big, big goals in mind. Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Rate, review, download, subscribe, tell a friend. This is a very special Inside LFC Max and Vince podcast and uh, history, and I know this is not lost on Vince LaRosa. Giorgio Chiellini joining us, and you guys just had an espresso. Just have a coffee, finish now, and I'm ready for the interview. You're ready for the interview. Excellent. <laughs> Can I tell you I'm not jittery from the coffee? It's because I, I, just, can't, I just can't believe this moment happened. What a wonderful moment. Thank history you. made. I want to say thank you to head of team security, Paul, who clued us in on this, and, uh, and thank you to you. Uh -huh. like, honestly, again. You, you brought a lot of joy to my life prior, and seeing you here now in Los Angeles, I have a feeling it's going to keep growing. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's hot here, but you coined a phrase over the weekend. Hey, it's hot in Nashville. And yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's hot, but 
not hot uh, as in Nashville. In Nashville, no. it's too hot or you too humid. And uh, you don't play but, in heat but, a lot. That's very rare. Uh, yeah, it's like in the pre-season when, when oh, we're yeah. in Italy in July and August it's so hot that I like it. But fortunately, we play almost the match from September to May. That is not so hot. But the the mighty May said me in Kansas City was worse. <laughs> then I have to have it as no, soon as possible. No, it can't be. It can't be worse. But uh, you, I've heard it's going to be pretty bad. It's going to be yeah, pretty bad. Uh, but uh, I will say, uh, when many players of your stature have come here, and recently Frank Lampard and uh, Andrea Pirlo, we didn't get to hear them being interviewed and talk about that and we know that these are challenges and maybe they're perceptions of the league but for you to talk about it was yeah. very new to me yeah but uh, i came here with a lot of enthusiasm and uh, i re i studied the league before coming here and uh, i'm studying uh, also now because uh, i think the knowledge is mo the most important thing in my role and uh, uh, and also in my career i i, I reach all the my my goals with work, passion, and uh, work every day. Now it's the same. I'm very happy to be here, proud to be here, because I have found a fantastic club. Uh, but I have to uh, start with my, to compare as the same level as my teammates. Then I have to know the, my opponent, my, and then I, I have to understand I will, I will stop them. I know it's not easy. I know I uh, need the help of my teammates, especially at the beginning, because now I, uh, I'm at the start of the season. They are in, in, in fully fit, and uh, it's not so easy. Everything is different, but I think also we can help each other and uh, in order to, to raise our level and to, to arrive at the best as possible to the end of the year. Can I f follow up? When you arrived and you got off a plane, you saw a game. You saw the game, you started training, you, you yes. played your first game. What did you tell yourself? What do I have to do so that I can make it as e as yeah, smooth as possible? I, I said that at the end, uh, at the end of the game and the press conference, I said my first thing uh, in the game uh, when I started in actually play easy. The first 20 minutes especially play easy because everything is different. Uh, it's two months I don't I didn't play and I I, I train a lot, but uh, training is not a game. Uh, who play soccer, uh, football? Uh, no. Uh, and then I have to rehab it to the distance, to the velocity, to the contact. Uh, everything is different. Then uh, surely I, the first 15, 20 minutes, uh, I, I don't feel good. But step by step, after my small easy pass or small easy uh, tackle, uh, I grow up and uh, I am feeling better minute by minute. And uh, I'm happy to help my team. Surely I am a little part of the team, not big, not less than the other. Everyone is the same. Uh, but but uh, it was a very important win because uh, uh, it's difficult. Uh, I understand in few times uh, how it's difficult to uh, win uh, on the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in Nashville is a good team. There, there is fantastic stadium. I, I knew it is new. It just opened yeah. a few months ago. Beautiful. Yeah, be so beautiful. The atmosphere inside is beautiful, but also outside. And then was not so easy. And it's important for for us uh, made uh, the w win on, on the road and then we have the the, the next game in Kansas it, it's the same important as the last one because if you want to stay on the top of the league uh, we have to, to, to win away. To your point uh, when you arrived here in your introductory press conference you talked about how you studied the league you said the league's yeah. raising now you have had a chance to, to like you said feel the physicality feel the pressure could you talk about because some players come here and say the level's raising, but they're not specific. What are the specifics yeah. when you say the level is raising? Uh, I see from some years ago also. I, I, I've read, uh, I've read in the last days, uh, uh, statistics of transfer market on the vast, most valuable um, leagues in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now MLS is coming to reach uh, uh, Portugal and Brazil as the eight uh, positions, seven positions. Eight, um, yeah. yeah, eight. Uh, Sounds uh, good. Just, Eight's uh, good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, it seems now it's really close to some uh, European league. The the play uh, is good. The phys physically is very good. I think technically it is good and uh, tactically it is different. It's not comparable to the Italian league because we are better in some things. Well, I mean, who, who is comparable to the Italian league tactically, right? No, like, no, uh, no, no, nothing but, reaches but quite no, that level. More, okay. more, more difference, uh, but there is many South, South American players, uh, North America. It's different also the way of play. It's not better or worse. It's different, but also we have difference between Italian, Germany, Italia, Germany, Spain, uh, and France or England. Uh, you can imagine. Uh, from the last part of the war, but 
many players uh, now have come from Europe and many players now want to try not at the end of his career but also when uh, when they they are fully fit uh, and then I think the the commission is going is doing a, a very good job uh, and uh, also the last um, uh, partnership with Apple uh, show these things because it's more important for 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 this league uh, to be uh, that everyone in the world could see the, the match because now it was also could be a start for for the next level maybe someone from South America could be could become uh, in, in, in US growing up uh, and also now it could be easy in the future the, the change and the travel from uh, the, from Europe to America until now is, is not but in the last years uh, it's growing up. Mm -hmm. Another thing, Gareth Bale mentioned it specifically, he was on TV, and it, he says part of why he wants to come to this league and this club is to raise the professional standard. That's something you can do with the experience you have. I'm curious, what is that? What are those things that you can instill to your teammates? Well, no, I haven't seen it at yeah, that moment. Yeah, no, uh, I did the same things uh, I, I did in Italy, I did in Juventus, not, n nothing more. Uh, but uh, also, I come here uh, in order to learn many things and discover new things. I, I know it's so different from Italy, all the culture, but I know but also... people learning from you, from yeah, you as well. Yeah, surely my teammates yeah. can learn from me, but because I'm 38, I have a lot of experience, and many of them are under 25 then, but also the same in Italy. I'm, I don't want to be a teacher, but I want to be a, a big brother for them, and uh, but also they give me the, the, the hand to help, the lightness of the life, of the, and, uh, and surely I, I, I'm here not to teach, but uh, more to learn. No, and you, you felt like a big brother in the game when you, Eddie Segura came on, you gave him a nice kiss. Yeah, but, that's important to you. But yeah, that's, yeah, but also because Eddie is, um, uh, is, is coming from an ACL surgery. I have the same three years ago. I know the difficulties we have to overcome to, to, to return. And when you come back, you, you, you think you are good, but you are not so good. That, uh, Eddie is a really good guy, fantastic guy, also fant a very good player. And this work a lot in order to, to come better as possible. I'm very happy to, to see how passionate he made every day in order to, to work and to recover. And this is why I kiss him when he's come it's out. wonderful. Yeah. Well, I had a chance to speak to Maxime Cropo. Uh, yeah. We spoke to Elias Sanchez. And they talked about how you immediately were kind of in the mix, talking to players, giving them tips, even in yeah. the Dallas game. You had just got off a plane, and they said at yeah. halftime, you were able to talk to them. But I, I think my bigger point is, they said when they li when when you spoke to them, yeah. it was in the language, in the way Steve speaks to them. How did that yeah. How did that mesh so quickly? I know your football brain. No, but, but I, I just seem small things, uh, clear things, but I don't want to exaggerate it. I don't want to overcome Steve because Steve is a leader, but I understand. I spoke with Steve in the last months. And I see also, I received some video clips from Steve mm -hmm. in the last weeks before coming here in order to understand what is his uh, way of football, what, what he think. And obviously, after many years, I understand almost what, what, what he wants from, from, from the team. And just uh, some, some adjustment uh, in order to uh, prevent some 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 mistakes but it could happen every day but but many times when you are out of the pitch it's easier because you are more lucid and you see when you run on the pitch you are tired and, and then you are thinking about many things uh, you don't see but really just you think Maxime Emilia is uh, one, two of the um, uh, more experienced uh, player in, in this team and surely it's easier life to them before the before the other one uh, but uh, I'm really, I'm really happy, and I, and I have to say thank you to all my teammates because after a few minutes and after also a few, few, few days, I really feel a, one of this group, and it's not easy because I have from the other part of the world for my career. I really want, want to crush the barrier as soon as possible, and uh, but John McCarthy do it uh, after uh, <laughs> after yeah, a few he, hours. He broke down those walls. Yeah. Quick. I McCarthy ask, makes so, the pot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he have to pay me a new suite. Yeah. Do we oh, true? So, yeah. on the record that now. was yeah. a nice what was that was that uh, yeah. Armani that was a nice suit <laughs> yeah no, nice suit uh, you had to pay me <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go McCarthy <laughs> you have to find yeah, a we'll pass the hat around fine <laughs> oh, fine we got it I don't want to go over your your all the managers in Juventus career because I'll go on for days and yeah. we'll be talking about but you have played for quite a few different ones yeah different styles too different yeah. game models yeah. so what was it about the conversation with Steve maybe one or two things that you picked out and said 
that's the type of game I want to play. That excites me. Yeah, uh, fighting uh, just a few time I am here, but I think just a few is more similar to Allegri than to Conte because I think uh, Conte is like a major and uh, you work a lot uh, and uh, every day uh, you are under pressure and. They are both two fantastic, different way of play, different way also play strictly in the, the position, uh, and uh, you are uh, you have to understand 100% all the movement. You know, 100% all the movement you have to do. Uh, Allegri thing is more calm, is more similar to Steve. In, in the right moment, uh, you. You have to do surely 100% as usual, but during the day is more relaxed, uh, le less pressure during the week in order to arrive, and also more calm. And Steve also at the end of the half uh, when the, there is crucial moments so against Galaxy, uh, we are winning, but, but it's not easy against Dallas. We are drawn, and uh, but but it's, it's almost calm. He he said few things in order to to improve. But also he he's, could be strict. When uh, when we need, but uh, I, my my first side is uh, really really good about everything here. Uh, surely it's a new chapter of my life, and I'm with, with so enthusiastic. I'm happy, proud, and to be here. Maybe I, I I see better than what really is, but it's a start. It's a long time until uh, the end of October, uh, the start of November. Four months where we miss, and uh, we have to. Uh, uh, became more uh, a group, not not for 50, uh, 25 players, because now the, the team is fantastic. It's a group arrived me and Garrett. Maybe sometimes it could be a problem and not uh, 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 something more. But the, our our mission now, our goal is, is try to remain this group and just helping the group, uh, giving uh, our our qualities. You mentioned the Galaxy game, and you were yeah. on, on the bench, and you've played some incredible rivalry games with Juventus. You have several rivals. Uh, how does this compare? What was different about that? Especially, it was one of the first experiences you had yeah, here in, in this league. I, I talk uh, before the game. I've, I've read the, the, uh, the statistics. Uh, it was uh, 15 games, 15 derby games, 65 goals. I said, there is not a derby. The derby finished <laughs> one nil. <laughs> That one at the end, uh, but is more closer mm -hmm. in, in Italy. And also, this one had five goals. <laughs> five goals another time. Then 60 games, 70 goals. It's unbelievable. You went to Sintra, uh, you went to Torino. It's impossible. It's like 10 years of goals. Well, yeah. Yeah. except for there was the one year with the Iguain 3 2, the header. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a yeah, rare some, one. Though. Yeah, rare one. Sometimes on this, this year, I made 1 1, but uh, two, two. Small chances and uh, the second leg uh, against Inter one nil. Then, uh, it, but it really we win with the tails. And now, yeah, surely we can win with uh, some details. But or, but the the game is more open. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the big difference I've seen in the first three weeks here. But I've seen also in the last months when I follow from 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 Italy. But I I, I see what we are improving and uh, we we do I think a little better in uh, in Nashville. To understand what, why, when we have to go to score, and when it's impossible, then we have to maintain the ball in order to manage the game mm -hmm. and lead the game. Because it's impossible go every time. But because if you have no space or they, they are covering, and uh, it, it's not a good uh, idea. But but still, uh, uh, work a lot of uh, these things because uh, it's, I think is the, the the an important step you can do it. What about atmosphere? You got a chance. You you ran onto the field when Chicho scored. You were the first scored. there. You're yeah. right there. The, yeah. the supporters are at your yeah. back. I mean, and, and also, you couldn't I, contain I, I, yourself. I, I, I don't know. We can't come in the, into. Yeah, the you're field. not allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not allowed. I have to pay a fine. Thank you, commissioner. I don't. Oh, I think, no. I think oh. the, fine, the fines are a lot smaller here okay, than they probably okay. are. Okay. Really. No, but in Italy, when you're scoring at every three-one, ten minutes to the end, uh, everyone yeah. coming uh, to to celebrate. Uh, and Pancho said to me, "No, no, no, come here, come here." <laughs> Pancho, uh, trouble <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but I was so happy because uh, it's an important game. I know, uh, I understand in few days uh, how much is important for the at least for uh, all the clubs and for the fans because in the last years and also this year, the, the first two games we, we lose against Galaxy. But I think in this year, especially, I don't know the last honestly because uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just see the the, the match of Vela against Ibrahimovic, but just see few 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 videos. Uh, but I think we are better, but we have to 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 show 
uh, on the pitch. The first two games we, we are not lucky, but also we, we we made some mistakes. I think in this match we are we did a fantastic game. At, at the end, we have to close the game before because uh, you, you can't uh, arrive at 90 minutes, 3-2, and, uh, and before, the, uh, before during the game, uh, there is a lot of difference between the, 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 the two teams. But uh, it's an important win, and also he gave more energy for the winning national. But it's important to continue to maintain the, this level of uh, enthusiasm, but also never... Uh, never uh, uh, give up the attention uh, about uh, how it's difficult to win because it is really uh, it's not so easy there is few uh, times between win and lose then uh, if you have all the attention all the energy all the passion every day you you can win if you are happy and a little bit more relaxed you lose in one time in a really few times by the way, you were involved on that first goal, so that had to feel good. You came up as a passing center back. No, and was a, okay, it, but, was, it, no, it was. No, but Carlos, Carlos is yes, <laughs> Carlos. Yeah, but you found goal. him between the yeah, lines. Yeah, okay, but... <laughs> it's a good start. But, but, it's a good start. If Carlos passed the, the ball to me in that position, the, the ball come, come behind <laughs> and we start, then Carlos is pretty involved. In Fair. Georgie, you're an absolute delight to talk to, and we really, we really appreciate much. This means a lot because we learn just so much like your teammates learn, and I know you're... We're here to help you if you ever need anything. We, we can sort you out with a, with a, a little espresso. By the way, <laughs> I've been told by Jay in the front that the team is consuming twice, if not three times as much coffee Okay. You arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but because the sound, sound, they taste and then the, the, the other one like it. It's normal. Oh, everyone, drink uh, some uh, more coffee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, drink some more coffee. Uh, Nespresso have to, to give me a percentage uh, of, the, uh, of more selling. <laughs> Giorgio Carolini, good luck uh, in uh, with Sporting everybody. Kansas City. Uh, yeah. Uh, sunscreen, you'll be good. Uh, um, uh, it, was, uh, it will be important for us, so important. And uh, I think we are preparing the best ways possible in the next day because, uh, I've said before, another away win could be uh, so good for, for, for the next model, for a signal for us and for, for to the other team. Giorgio, here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast, I'll get Vince, I mean, he's just... Over the moon. I'm we'll get him ready I'm for open. it a little. Okay. And he went, <laughs> he went through all the Juventus managers as an added bonus for Vince's uh, for listening pleasure. Make sure you download, subscribe, share with a friend. We'll be here at the Performance Center. Thanks to everyone who allowed this to be possible. And we'll see you next week. Oh, yes! They knocked on the door.